Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nikon Creators Hour. I am your host, Mike Corrado. I've been with Nikon for over 35 years, and I've been taking pictures for over 40 years. We're bringing you interesting conversations with some really cool photographers and artists, and today we have with us Hilmar Smith. Hilmar, welcome to the Creators Hour. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. This has been like a dream of mine just to be here talking to you. Thank you so much. No, I can't help but uh, shout out to our friend JC who uh, brought us together and uh, so glad that he shared your work with us. And, you know, during these times, we started off with the Creators Hour at the beginning of the pandemic. And even though we're sort of working our way out of it, we wanted to keep the content going because we found it to be so inspirational and educational. And we want people tuning in to be inspired. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Hilmar, for giving us time this morning. Um, like the format for the other interviews, we ask you to select about eight to ten of your images um, that we want to go through over the next hour to talk about them and get the backstory. So thank you for taking the time to do that. I know a lot of photographers are not happy with me for asking them to cull down their work to such a small body of work, and I know you do a lot of work. So um, I want to get started, though, with where you got started. I always love to know where someone's from. This is a genuine conversation with you because this is really the first time um, we're connecting. We spoke on the phone. Um, but where are you from? And then dig into that story about how you got into photography. All right. Uh, well, the funny part about me and photography is that I never intended to be a photographer. I never bought a camera and say, hey, I'm going to start photography. It was just a camera that my ex-husband had at home. And he just put it on the side. And one day I decided to pick it up and um, taking pictures of my son. The funny back story of this is that uh, my brother and I are 11 months apart and he has like thousands and thousands of pictures of him and I have none. <laughs> and uh, so it was funny because I wanted to do pictures of my son, but at the same time, I never wanted to do anything like everybody else. So I discovered Photoshop. And that's really when my passion with photography was born. Mm. That's the exciting part to me because you and I have spoken about this. I've mentioned it in other interviews. I don't, I like to think about pictures, but I don't conceive pictures from a beginning to end. I don't lay them out in my brain. I, I'm more of that moment kind of shooter. So that's why it fascinates me um, to know this. And you do um, uh, cite on your page, your creative portrait photographer, conceptual children's photographer. You do have a background in Photoshop. I know you do lecturing. I know you're an educator, you're a writer. So, um, you know, that's an amazing pool of talent that you got within you. And uh, you can see it in the work. And if you've not seen Hilmar's work, those of you tuning in, you're going to be blown away because I just love this kind of stuff. But uh, before we get into it, are you self-taught in Photoshop? Did you go to school at all photography? You just picked up the camera and kept going on your own? Talk a little bit about how you've learned and what's inspired you along the way. I, I've, I've, I have gone to workshops and all of that, but I, I don't have like any, any training in school. I didn't go to school for that. Um, it was just me trying to figure it out. It was just me trying to, to, to you know, to get my vision um, um, into my pictures and, and playing with Photoshop and trying different things and experimenting. And I think that's, that's we should all do when we're learning. It's just not just try to do portraits and I stay in portraits. Actually, my first job as a photographer was uh, working for a motorsport team in, in motorsports. And I went to F1 races and I did a lot of stuff, but it wasn't, um, at the end it was fun, but it's not what I wanted to do. So it's all about experimenting and, and trying different things. And I think that's, that's, that's the best way to really um, define yourself as an artist because you're not following um, somebody else's um, um, path, but you are just making your own as you go. Mm -hmm. And how many years have you been taking pictures and, and doing this kind of conceptual work? I started, I think that it was at the end of 2011 or at the beginning of 2012. Beautiful. Well, again, I, I, to see the work coming from that short a time period is pretty amazing, so I can't wait to see what your future holds, but um, I, I love the fact that uh, we mentioned, you mentioned this before to me in conversation, you're inspired by your children. Um, yes. Talk a little bit about that. I saw a behind the scenes uh, posting on your social, your Facebook page 
of the concept of at sea, um, you know, with a lot of props from the sea. You talk about props being a big part of your work. Talk about how your kids inspire you and talk about maybe the way you construct uh, some of the images we're going to see. And we'll talk about them individually as well. Yes. Yes. Well, um, this is how I started. I said um, I had a camera and I wanted to take pictures of my son. My son was diagnosed with autism when he was three years old. And he's very high functioning, but at, this, at the time he wasn't really interested in me taking pictures. And, and I had these ideas of creating these amazing things with him, but he wasn't interested. So um, photography was a way for me to connect with him because it wasn't really about taking the picture because he wasn't interested in that. So um, what I used to do and what I, what I still do with them and with my little clients is that I sit with him and we do a lot of storytelling we do a lot of sketching and we, we make a story and we plan like, um, let's say I have a cardboard box and, and what do you think that we can do with that? Oh, that can be a car, that can be a rocket and that can be all of that. And what will you do in that? And we will make a drawing and a sketch, like I will put the stars here and I will do this and that. And that's how I created all of these images with him because we will uh, plan them and we will do a storytelling and a sketching. And by the time that, that I, I had him in front of the camera, I would tell him, hey, we're going to do this sketch and, we're, and I'm going to transform it into a picture. So he had his mind on the sketch and the story that we made before, and he will get totally into it. So then he will sit with me and he will see me doing these things in the computer and then he will see um, how everything come out and it was transformative for him because he got really into it and he started telling me uh, what he wanted to do, coming up with ideas. And it, become, it became like part of our life because it's something that we do almost a daily basis. My, I have a daughter that is now five years old and she comes and she tells me, mom, what if we take this picture like this and what if we do this and that? So um, I think that, that doing this with my son and now with my daughter, not only, um, made me better as an artist and as a photographer, but it made me understand how um, I can do all of these for other kids and for other families, because it's different when you tell a kid, just stand there and pose for me. Uh, I know. They look at their faces, right? But when you connect with them and, and you try to bring out their, um, their, their stories, their imagination is, they, they feel like are, they're part of the project and they are the little creative directors. So um, it changes the whole, the whole perspective on them, just on how taking the picture, how being in front of the camera. That, that is an amazing story and, and a great way to think about it too. I, it makes me think back to photographing uh, children and Many times when you could just turn the camera around and show them the image on the display, they go from not wanting to have their picture taken to, come on, show me more, show me more, take mm -hmm. more. So it's nice that you integrated the art with that too. Let's definitely jump into your pictures now, if that's okay with you. Yes, definitely. Um, I want to launch this show. You have some real great uh, imagination here and creative. Um, I'm going to let you take it away from here at each of the images. If I have questions along the way, I'll ask. But uh, talk about this image, the concept, the creative. Where does it come from and, and what's this about? Well, this is one of those funny things that I do with my kids. Um, I'm partnered with a prop house and it's a huge warehouse with everything that you can imagine. So um, we picked up this helmet and uh, we, we usually bring like a lot of things home just to play with them. So we picked up this helmet um, on a Friday and during the weekend, we watched um, a series of unfortunate events on Netflix. And uh, my son was obsessed with that show. In one of the um, episodes, there is um, a kid with one of those helmets and as soon as he saw, he was like, I want a picture like that. And I was like, okay, we have it. So um, I put the helmet on my son and the funny thing that you cannot see, I didn't know what to put on there. So I have this stray jacket. <laughs> it's for, you know, customs. I have a kind of custom. And I put it on him without tying his hand, of course. And we took the picture, but then um, he kind of told me how he wanted it. And he showed me... Um, 
a picture of the coloring that it had on the on the show. So that's how this came out. I just um, the jellyfish. It, they are from pictures that I took in the uh, aquarium in Atlanta. And I had like, I, I always take pictures of everything because I know that I always use them um, somewhere else. And then the little bubbles I add on Photoshop with a brush. And um, that's, that's pretty much how we work. He sits with me, he look at it, he tell me he likes it or he doesn't like it or I don't like this, can you change that and can you put that instead? So what it is important for me as a mom and as an artist is that I want these images that I make of my son to really um, represent what he wants and what he had in his mind. So when I hang them on my wall, they feel uh, proud, not because they're in the picture, but because it's their art, is their imagination. Do you give that same creative freedom when you're photographing a client as opposed to your family? Um, Definitely. Do you let them have that kind of input to feel that same empowerment, I guess you'd say? It takes a lot of education um, uh, because I, what I want, because they go to my website and they see all of these images and, I want, and they say, I want something like that. And then I tell them, why do I make this and how I started and, and you know, what, what the process is. Uh, for a parent, it's just like, I want my son to do this and this and that. And I was like, well, probably your son or your daughter are not going to feel this discomfortable doing something. Let me sit with them. And let me plan with them and see what they want. And then I can just put it together. But I want my work is most uh, focusing on, on the kid imagination than what the parents want. Because I know that if I do what the kid wants, the parents are going to love it after. Because it's a representation of uh, their age and how, you know, their mind work at that certain age and, and, and you know, who they are as a kid as, at a certain age. I think it's fascinating. You answered one of my questions. So it sounds to me like you'll take pictures of just about everything, have an archive of things that you could turn to. So it, like your prop house, it's almost like having an imaging prop house, uh, I yeah. guess, as well. So you can turn to those things. How long does a piece like this take to shoot? And then how long does it take to post-produce in Photoshop? When you have the concept in mind um, in advance with, with your client or with, your, with my son or with a kid, uh, the shooting part is super fast. I didn't take more than five minutes taking this because we already knew what we were doing and how he wanted it to look. So putting the light together is really easy when you already have a concept in mind. Um, the same thing when, when it's something more complicated that um, it has a sketch, is um, really easy and it's a lot easier to get a picture this way in my opinion than just getting a regular portrait of a kid because when I do the planning with them they already know what they're going to be doing they already know what they're going to be posing because they feel like actors they feel like they're part of a show or whatever so you get um, the posing and you get all of that really fast now putting the whole thing together in photoshop it takes a lot more time. Um, this one took me about, I will say three hours, uh, but some other complicated ones, sometimes eight hours, sometimes even days. But uh, when you love what you do, it's, it's not really about time. I know that, that it's, it's apparent and thank you for that. And we'll <laughs> jump on to the second image again. I, I feel like I see a little bit of you in here as well. This is the family now. Uh, yes. What's the concept behind this image and how does something like this come together? This is fascinating to me. Uh, this is funny because this is again um, um, with the prop house. Uh, I, it was our first time out after the lockdown. So um, I was like, okay, let's do something fun at home. And, you know, let's bring the outdoors indoors. So we went there and we grabbed the um, backpack, um, the... The wood um, is from the prop house. The snake is a prop. The uh, fireplace is a prop. The tent is my daughter's tent. The little lion is a prop as well. So most, mostly everything that you see in there uh, are props. The only things that I added in Photoshop are the bird and even the, the, the spider um, is a real prop and it's that big. 
So what, when, I, when we went there, what I wanted to do was something magical for them because we were still at home. We were still in lockdown. So I was like, well, how about if we just camp downstairs in the living room and we watch a movie and the fireplace is, is just um, a prop, but you plug it and it really looks like fire. So if you go to my social media, you can see all the videos of, of, of that night that we did the, the camping. So I was like, we have all of these amazing props and we slept in the living room like for two or three nights because the, the kids were thrilled about having all of these in the living room. So of course I was like, okay, let's extend the memory to an image in, in a picture. So uh, we just sat in there. I put a light inside of the tent um, and then I put a light with a with an orange gel and and move it around every time that I was taking the picture of us. My camera was in a tripod. And um, the rest I started adding the the little vines in Photoshop and you know I wanted to to add a bird as well um, and a little bit more of grass because we had a um, we had a carpet that it looked like grass and everything. So it's pretty much um, our experience during the lockdown and, and we brought several props during that time just to keep ourselves distracted and, and, and do funny photography um, projects while we were at home. And this is a way for us to remember that, you know, it, I mean, it's crazy times right now, but um, you can still have fun. You can still be creative and you can still uh, make um, your kid's life magical, which it has been um, my real um, focus and, and dream in my life, um, regardless of whatever we're going through. I think that, that making my kid's life magical and and doing amazing things for them that they will look after when they grow up um, is what I really want to do. And, and, and I think that every parent should do regardless of whatever is happening in the world. I think that's amazing. I guess decades from now, they'll be looking at this picture, hopefully, and recalling <laughs> what you went through during these times in 2020. Um, yes. But it's fun. I want to be there. I, I want to be in the next picture. Um, <laughs> just think and it's you're welcome. How how long does it take? Do you say to yourself, "I'm done here"? I mean, I feel like in in art form like this, you could tweak this and tweak this and tweak this. Are you finished at any point where you say, "I'm not going to touch it"? Do you go back and work on this uh, type of work again? Uh, is it ever it's, ending? Um, with this one, it took me forever, and um, I will probably look at it in two weeks and want to to change something or add something else. I try not to do it because when I already posted, it's already posted there. It's, it, you know, it was that time. It, it, it is what it is, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But um, this one took me, I would say about eight hours to put together. Just to add um, the, the outdoors, just to add the lights around us and, and just to do the color grading and, and move things around. It takes about that time, yeah. Beautiful. Well, very, very well done. I love these stories. This is really great. Again, simple, color, pop, um, yes. excitement, energy in the same shot. Talk about what's going on here. What's the concept and what were you trying to do? I want, um, I have a whole series of like kind of vintage sports and I wanted to do something very colorful, uh, but at the same time, very simple. And it is really, 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 really hard for me to do simple things. <laughs> I don't know why I look at architectural uh, photography and long exposures in black and white, and I look at it and I say, it's so beautiful. Can I do it? It is extremely hard for me because I usually um, just like to add too many things at the same time. So um, color for me is very important. If you look at my portfolio, um, bright colors is, is my jam. It's what I love to do. My son in this one, um, I just gave him the racket and I actually was throwing little balls at him and making him try to hit them. And I knew that those uh, pictures that I was taking, um, I could use them then to, um, to add them on the, on the images at the in a later time. So this is 
what we did, um, this was made in my living room. I just set these papers in my living room. I said like most of my pictures when there are no campaigns and they're not for clients, I shoot them in my living room. So expression for me and, and humor is what I would like to do. Um, um, let me give you a little back of my work. As I told you, I started photography um, in 2011 or 2012. At that time, it was about the same time that my son was diagnosed uh, with autism. And at the same time, I was going through divorce and it was a lot of, a lot of things going on in my life. So um, then I, I, I moved out with my son and then I fell in love again and then I got pregnant with my daughter and I was in bed for most of my pregnancy. Then I had postpartum depression and it was a really a dark time of my life. And to, to go over postpartum depression, I, I did a 365 self portrait. Most of the images that I did on that 365 were funny pictures of me. And um, I discovered during that time that humor was, humor and photography was, was the thing that changed the way that I felt and it made me feel, feel inspired again and it made me feel funny and it made me fell in love with photography and with life again. Uh, fast forward like six months after um, my, my daughter's and my fiance and my daughter's dad passed away. And I was, it was like all this time um, that I was building and looking for happiness. And then, you know, and it was at the beginning of 2012. It was on, on January 2nd. So uh, I was trying to leave behind of all of that, that darkness. And, and I was found again in that black hole of depression. So um, during that time, I fell in love again with photography. And it, and it was when I decided to go full time with photography. Um, and, and during that time, I sat with myself and I said, well, what, what are the things that make you happy? And for me, it was photography, it was um, humor, it was the Disney parks, and I moved back to Orlando during that time. So um, I realized that making images with bright colors and, and with funny expressions and all of that, not only, um, look great but it also made me feel great and 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 by making them me feel great i realized that also when i posted them online people would love them people would laugh and somehow it became my my style so um these images that i make not only of my kid of or everyone i just try to bring a little bit of humor and just to try to make um, the session fun so people want to come back and have a picture taken by me and I want everybody that see them just just feel a little bit of joy so um, I think that photography for all of us is is a personal because you don't choose to be a photographer for money you don't choose art just because your dad told you that you want to be an artist it's usually the opposite that that you know they want you to be a doctor they want you to be a lawyer or all of that but um I think that, uh, that we should take what, what we like and, and, and what we personally enjoy and what personally brings you joy and, and just stick to it and try to spread it all over the place. Because if it can bring me joy, I know that it can bring everybody else's joy a little bit too. So beautifully said. And can't thank you enough for sharing that personal story with us. And it certainly speaks to, you know, why we see the colors and the brightness and the humor in, in your work. And I, I, I love this as, We'll move on. Um, again, I, from the original picture where there was a lot of work and certainly the second picture from home during the pandemic, um, even mm -hmm. more work, these pictures get a little simpler. Talk uh, a little bit about the concept here, but dig into your lens selection as well. What do you like to choose for different lenses in the way of focal lengths, whether it's zoom or fixed and whatnot, but um, talk about this. I think this that every single one of these pictures is taken by a 2470. Okay. And, and um, I'm, even though I write reviews <laughs> and I'm very um, into the technical side of things in, in my work, in my writing work and all of that, um, I try to keep it very simple um, when I'm shooting, like when I'm shooting in the studio. So this image is one of my 
favorite clients. We have done several things together uh, from her Christmas cards and everything. This is a branding um, session, a personal branding session. She is a coffee obsessed girl. Everything she posts in social media, everything that she does is based on coffee. So um, obviously, um, she's very happy. She's an extrovert. She's funny. She has this TikTok account that is just so funny. So um, obviously, the bright colors represent um, her personality. And I told her to bring her favorite um, coffee mugs, and she brought thousands of her of those. So. Um, it's just about having fun. You can see here that she's laughing and, 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 and we're just enjoying our time. And then obviously with the coffee mug, I didn't want her to, to get all dirty or to get a splash on her clothes. So I add um, the coffee um, on Photoshop. Gotcha. And, and so in a session like this, are you working with the one image and one idea? Do you have wardrobe change? Do you have stylists on board? Are you yes. a one person operation or do you have a team of people working with you? Talk a little bit about what's happening behind the scenes. Well, it's not a really big team. Um, it's just the hair and, um, hair and makeup person that I have been working for, um, uh, for years and years. And, um, we plan in advance when, when somebody wants to hire me to do a certain kind of work, what I want to know is, is just the same approach when I have with kids. I just want to know as much as I can for them because I want the pictures that I take of them, especially because it's a personal branding um, session. I want to know as much as I can because I want the pictures to represent them. And, they, and I want them to love the picture and to feel that they are like really um, relating to themselves to, to, to the images that we're taking. So um, what I do is just I create a Pinterest board with several and several ideas in, in wardrobe ideas. And I just send them to my client and tell them, tell me, what do you think about this? Tell me, um, do you like color? Do you don't like color? Would you be comfortable um, um, wearing this or not? Now, you can make a Pinterest board and send it to me with the things that you like. They are not necessarily have to be picking from the ones that I sent because I want before everything. The worst thing that you can do is because there are people that, that are not well expressing themselves for what they like. And um, sometimes they will do whatever you want to do during the shoot. And, and then when you show them the pictures, um, they might like them, but they don't feel like connected to them. And I want my clients to feel connected to whatever I'm doing. So it's very important for me just, just to have as much feedback as I can. Um, in the beginning, when I was starting photography, I remember that I had a couple of clients that they would just come, I just want to, you know, just, just tell me, tell me what you like, tell me whatever you like. I mean, I like your work and those are the worst clients that you can have. No, because, um, they're bad. It's just that they know what they want. They just don't know how to express them. So you have to learn how to guide them in, in and make them tell you what they like and what they don't so you don't make the mistake of just doing something that they're not going to like and they're not going to be happy about. I think that makes a lot of sense. And that's what's going to keep the clients coming back is when yes. you, you share, I think, that creative uh, back and forth. And that's, it's a really great uh, bit of advice for everybody out there um, to, uh, to follow. So, so this is amazing. So you'll work with this woman many times, I would yes. think, with yes. different concepts. So you're not rushing it into one shoot. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, um, um, I think that the first one that we did, we did like, and I readily do headshots, but she really needed some. So um, we sat and we got an, a couple of ideas, but they were not like the regular headshots because I just can't do those because they're too simple for me. And then I did her um, Christmas cards. And then after her Christmas cards, um, her kids were getting into modeling um, agencies. So I did a lot of different images with her kids. Then she came for personal branding. And, and you know, she, she, I, we have had like several um, shoots together. Awesome. And those are the clients that, you know, you know that you make them happy the first time because they keep coming back. 
And you learn business along the way. I mean, you figured that out along with the photography part as well, marketing and things like that. Did you yes. figure this stuff out? You studied research workshops. How'd you figure it all out? You just learned a by little mistake? bit of everything. Um, you know, you have to know what you what you work for. I think that the the most important part that a photographer has to learn is first what they want to do, and and, and second, um, how to treat and how to to work with a client. And most of that uh, you can learn by figuring out what to put and what not to put in your contract. Your contract is your best friend as a photographer. And I've learned that uh, the good and the bad way throughout um, my business, my photography business career. So um, for marketing, I think the best for the best marketing that you can do is just you know, share and post your images around um, your clients. Good clients um, are, are a big part of your marketing, your work, everything that you do, your word and how you present yourself um, is a big part of your marketing plan. Well, I, I want to make sure people understand this too. I, I'm saying Hilmar, which is the correct pronunciation of your name. But when they go out to search, search you on social, if they haven't looked at the titles here or the, you know, the uh, pages for the creative hour, it's G I L M A R S M I T H, correct? Yes. 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 So check that out, ladies and gentlemen, tuning in. Let's roll on. I, this is a picture I've seen before um, as uh, your profile picture on yes. uh, on Facebook. It's colorful. It's delicious. It's it's bright, as you say. It's humorous. Um, talk about what's going on here. What was the concept? What made you sprinkle your face um, uh, and make this photo? This is part of my self-portrait series, and it's funny because I did this series like in 2000 and between 2012 and 2017, and it was when I was grieving um, my, my fiance and all of that, but the first pictures are really dark and really sad. And then I remember when I was doing my 365 project that the phone pictures were the one that were, you know, making me feel good and all of that. So I started taking these um, self portraits and I had this idea of, of sprinklers and I actually set my lights and everything, set my um, camera on a tripod, but I wanted the sprinkler falling. So my kids were each one of them on my side, just throwing them <laughs> on top of me. So the funny thing about this, and if you go to any of my pages, Without noticing, it was until somebody pointed it out at me. Most of those self-portraits during, I think it was the end of 2016 or 2017, they're all with food. <laughs> they're very colorful and, and they're with food. And I never realized that I was actually playing with food. But um, yeah, this is um, something that I, I always um, tell people. Um, a lot of photographers are scared. They feel uncomfortable in front of the camera. They feel like self-portrait is another thing. Um, to me, is self-portrait. Um, I learn lighting. I learn posing. I learn being uncomfortable in front of the camera. Um, I learned so much through self-portrait um, that I always ask and I always tell people just to give it a try um, by sitting yourself in front of the camera instead of being behind it. Um, you get the feeling that your clients uh, feel. You, you feel uncomfortable. So you have to learn how to, to move, how to, to ease yourself or, or what's going to make you feel better. And, and I think that it's important for us, for photographers, to, to, to know how, how it feels being on that side so, so we can try to manage and we can try to ease it for, for our clients and our subjects. No, I think that's a great point because it, it can be uncomfortable for people on the other side. Uh, yes. And uh, it, it, if you ever run into that uncomfortable client, what do you do to try to loosen them up at all? I know different photographers have different ways of approaching it, some with music, some with hugs. Is there anything that you would do to relax a client that comes in and you clearly see that they are really tense? They're just really, really buttoned up. Humor. I talk a lot. I talk a lot and, and, and I think that humor is, is a great way to ease them up. Um, music, music. I, I don't play my music when I'm in a photo shoot. I let them play their music. 
So whatever it is, if it's heavy metal, less, you know, rock, <laughs> you know, whatever it is that make them feel um, in it. And, and, and if your um, subject is uncomfortable, you have to know uh, and you have to be confident and you have to know how to post them. And, and because if you don't know how to post them, they're uncomfortable. You're looking at each other and, and you're not going to get anything. So you have to get your posting right. You have to know how to direct them. You have to know how to talk to them. You know, how one one joke here and there and, you know, making them laugh to is them. I think that the first three pictures are always the, the hardest one. And then after that, if you really know how to 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 handle everything and, and to take over and, 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 and direct your photo shoot, everything gets a lot easier after that. Beautiful. Now, you, you mentioned your kids got involved in this photo, too. Did you do your own makeup here, or do you bring in an yes. artist? And I got to know, how are you getting the sprinkles to stick and stay? Is it random? Are they uh, dropping off left and right, or what are you doing here? Actually, I had my makeup, and after I did my makeup, I used, like, a face oil, and I put them around, and I stick some of them with the face oil, <laughs> and, and then my kids just through the rest of me, but I tried just to get some in there uh, before. I love it. It was absolutely fun, and I love the whole concept behind the, uh, the self-portraits. This is hysterical to me. Talk about this image. Take it away. <laughs> but, um, same concept. I wanted to do uh, the retro sport kind of photo shoot, very simple with a lot of colors. Um, I did this for a campaign for a light company and, and I didn't want to do uh, composites because I wanted to show more the lighting part of it than, than, than really uh, my work in Photoshop. So working with uh, models is some kind of easy. They know how to pose. They know how to do everything is fast. But I have a fascination of working with regular normal people because we um, all want to look like in the magazine and we're no models and, and you know. So I wanted to, do, to take these pictures and I took some of my son and I took a lot of um, different people that are no models. So I, um, this is a friend of my brother and, and the moment he walks somewhere, people laugh. He's just like one of these characters that, that you know, so without telling him anything, I tell him, hey, I want to take some pictures of you. I'm going to get the wardrobe and everything, whatever I do. Are you okay with it? And he was like, I'm totally fine. So he got here and I showed him what he was wearing. He was like, oh, this is awesome. So um, this was pretty much easy. It's just bringing out um, people's personality. And I think... Um, that, that you as a photographer, you have to learn how to do that by talking, by joking around, by dancing, uh, by creating a connection. Uh, with him, it was easy. I picked the colors. I knew that these three colors were going to look fantastic together. Um, and I knew his hair, and I knew that this concept with his hair was going to be fantastic. And he is all dancing, and, and uh, he's just a funny guy. So um, another picture taken in my living room. I set all of this in my living room. I just play music and he just started playing with it. And, and I had so many fantastic pictures uh, from this photo shoot that I just can keep posting and posting for days. Um, I think that's amazing. You, you know, step on that for a little bit. Talk about that a little bit, um, social. How often a day are you posting? Is it just Instagram? You mentioned TikTok before. I'm not... I'm not completely into the TikTok or Snapchat yet. Um, I know my family is, my daughter is for sure. And yeah. Nephews. Um, what is your approach to social? Because you mentioned that a couple of times. I think, um, and, and I think I, may, I mentioned this before, photography, social media, and everything. There are people that appro approach it as a business, and I'm not going to lie, this is a business for me. Photography is my business. But um, I'm more interested in personal connection. It's about telling my story, who I am. I am an immigrant. I'm a single mother. Uh, my, my son is in the autism spectrum, and I, sh and, and I share a lot about that in my life and, and about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So um, I'm not just sharing a picture just for likes. I, I want to have an impact on people, and I know that I have a very – uncommon story and whatever I do in my life is, 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 
is um, probably different to from all of my friends' lives. So um, social media, I started social media um, in Google Plus, and it was a long time ago, and I and I had a wonderful group of people that when uh, my fiance passed away, they were my biggest support because I don't have family in this country. So um, I post images pretty much daily, um, no much in, um, no much on Instagram every day, but I'm always um, posting something on my stories or, you know, we're going to the prop house, we're getting props, we're planning doing this, we're planning doing that. If I find, um, I always try to share my voice and everything that is happening in the world, my opinion. And I think that it's important that we share um, that part of us because we, we decided, I decided to be a creator and a photographer and an artist, just not for pictures. I think that there has to be something personal and we have to share. Um, I think that we have the, the voice uh, with our art and with whoever we are to impact some other's life. And, and, and in my case, um, I'm creating this, but I'm bringing you all, all whatever is happening in my life and, 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 and I want people just to, I want the mom um, or the wife that is a home in an abusive relationship by a guy that is telling her that she is not going to be, it's not going to be nothing if she leave him. Um, I want her to look at me and I was like, well, look at me. I, I, I was able to do it. You know, I want the mom that has um, two kids or one kid just um, diagnosed with, with a spectrum. I want I want to share my story and I have done that in my blog and this is how it went for me and this is what it worked for me. And this is the beauty of autism and this is the beauty of, of learning through your experience. I lost um, my, my daughter's dad and I share my story with them and, and you know how hard it is to raise two kids on, on your own and, and you know the questions and what's what you know. Um, it is important for me to, to, to not only make art my work, but it's important for me just to um, get my kids involved in it and, and be inspired by it and, and, and know that, that regardless of what have happened in our life, we were able to create and, and, and things together. So um, social media for me is just not pictures, it's just more than stories and, and I think that pictures are stories. So I, I have TikTok. I, I got into TikTok recently. Um, it is a lot of fun to watch. I'm still trying to find my voice in the platform because every platform is, is different and it's a different crowd. Uh, but I totally enjoy it and I share my behind the scenes and I share how I make pictures and, and tips and tricks in Photoshop and photography. Um, I do a lot of Instagram. Um, I share how I create these images and the um, time lapses that I do, and I do time lapses on Photoshop and whatever. Um, same on Facebook. Uh, probably on Facebook, I can get a little bit more personal. But yeah, I think that that social media can be a good thing and a bad thing, and it's really up to us how to measure it and, and what we allow and what we not allow. Well, thank you for sharing the stories, and thank you for making us smile with uh, the fun in the pictures. Who's this? What's going on know. here? <laughs> uh, Pat, Pat Fashion. You know, back again, we're in the simple mode here of shooting in a portrait, but talk about what's yeah. going on here. We did a whole series of circus. Um, I have some composite with my kids with circus props and, and doing all kind of stuff, and, and this is part of it. Um, the customs, uh, I have created like a group of amazing creative people and the guy that made these customs, um, he does customs for Universal, Disney, um, theaters, TV shows and whatever. So uh, I just went there and I was like, I want to pour up a few customs and he gave me these and um, this picture is actually a test slide. Mm -hmm. testing the light and I was just testing the light for a picture that I took of my son that was recently um, the cover of Lightroom user magazine uh, but yeah um, is just the part that I'm always taking pictures of my kids but really I'm in them so um, I try to take these self portraits from time to time so I can add them to to our family book eventually um 
but is is as I said, self portraiture is a great way just to hone your craft, to to experiment, to to conceptualize and, and, and just to find your own voice. And I found my own voice in photography by experimenting with self-portraiture and, and experimenting with my kids. So That's you don't have to look far That's away. I mean, you just don't have, um, I, I know that more people sit at home and say, well, I don't have this camera or I don't have this or I don't have models, I don't have access to models, I don't have access to this and that. Um, you don't have to look anywhere. I mean, you you can do um, whatever you want with whatever you have. And there is a site that says, um, out of limitation comes creativity. And it's one of my favorite quotes because I think that I am always the most creative when when I just have a little bit to use. Well, and I, I love what you're talking about, too, and building a bit of a network. You've got the prop house, and now you've got this gentleman that designs fashion. Um, to have that network of people around you, I can't imagine that you're not inspired, you know, that you all inspire each other. But to put it to work, I think it's great. Again, especially in the wake of the pandemic, being home and still being able to create. I mean, a lot of people were struggling with what they wanted to do or what they could do, and were by no means completely out of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're seeing rises in other parts of the country now, but it's nice to know that this is your backyard in a sense. You're doing this, you know, very close to home and you have just a lot of different ideas. I, I think it's just, it's phenomenal and just a, another beautiful portrait. Um, <laughs> this is, again, you talk about your humor and the crazy and the fun and all of that built into uh, an image. Talk about this. How do you, how do you decide you're going to race on snails? I mean, where does that come from? This is what I think that is important for everybody to follow me on, on Instagram because this is where I mostly share these kind of videos. And, and so you can see that I'm just now babbling here and telling you stories. Um, one morning, I think it was a Saturday morning, I was sitting and my daughter came to me to, I want I want a picture with the snails. And I was like, yeah, we want to be racing snail. Her dad was a race car engineer. So uh, there is a lot of racing memorabilia and, and kind of stuff here at home. So um, I grabbed my phone right away because, you know, I sometimes feel like people are not going to believe me that all these things come out of my kid's mind. So I was like, what? And I made a video. I want a picture. And so I found uh, the background um, picture of the racetrack is on uh, a stock image. So I right away uh, brought up a stock image and I was like, okay, so what do you want? We want to be racing and I was recording all of this. We're going to be racing on snails and and I'm going to be winning and my brother is going to be second and you're going to be losing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, of course. You know, so uh, as I was, uh, as she was telling me, I was, you know, pulling out, um, snails pictures and all of that and i made the background so this is what is fantastic to me because um i mean these little kids have all these magical ideas and how are you gonna you know let them waste them so i i put all of these roughly together and i put the three snails and i called my son and we went to my garage where i had set like uh, my lights and i always have a gray background in my garage and and we sat on um, Apple boxes. Obviously, I already had um, the background set with the three different snails. So what we had to do is just try to get them in the right perspective, the right angle and everything. Um, and that's something that you practice. Uh, a, a Photoshop composite is a very technical thing. So you have to learn um, lighting, you have to know about perspective and you have to know really how to take the pictures so they really match whatever you're trying to use to accomplish or you know. So we sat in the Apple boxes is one of them and they actually put their hands and so we, we keep moving in. I was like, well that's the right one. And and it's just fantastic how it came out. And obviously I was losing so <laughs> I wasn't gonna look that happy. But um, these are one of the magical things that we do, and these images are so precious to me because, you know, they, came, they come from my daughter's imagination, and when she looks at them, when they're done, and when they're printed, and when they're in our wall, she is like, oh, she feels like so, so excited about all of that, and, 
And I think um, that I, I do it for the picture, I do it for the magical part of it, but I think that I'm giving them a, a very important tool that is the tool of creativity. Um, creativity and my photography um, saved my life during my depression, during my postpartum depression and grief. Um, imagine just these kids being able to be creative and, and having creativity as a part of their life, how they can use it whenever they need it, when they're older or when something happened to them. So I'm just looking forward to see how they're going to use their creativity um, um, this in the future. It's, it's beautiful. And I want to reiterate what you had said because I don't want anybody to just go over this lightly. You have to know lighting in the lighting direction or else it doesn't look real. You have to know how each of the elements that you're creating in different parts of the photo have to look like they fit with everything else. And you've done that so perfectly here. Uh, and I, I love the fun. I love your expression makes it. I mean, hers looking <laughs> back, I'm in the lead. His laughing and showing all that fun. But yours is priceless um, <laughs> in, in the background. So I love that you find the humor in yourself in all of this too because I think that's so important uh, for all of us, but thank you again for sharing. Um, yeah, it is what we do. We, we truly enjoy doing these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And we're back to the prop house, but I'm guessing not, not real sprinkles here, um, no, none all over the face, real. like the self portrait, but I know we got two more pictures coming up, this mm -hmm. one and, and one to finish with. Talk a little bit about both of these as we come through them, as we go through them. Okay, um, this lady, um, she found me on the internet. And um, she was, I won my 50th birthday photo shoot. She's turning 50. I cannot see any 50s on, on her face. And right. I want something that reflects, you know, I want something uh, party. I want fun. And I was like, I got you, girl. You know, bright color, something fun. So I, I went and then she wanted something um she showed me um, her wardrobe and everything for what she wanted for the other picture um, that I believe is the last picture that you have in the whole um, set over there. Um, so we did this picture for her birthday. Um, uh, we were going to go to a studio, then um, she changed the day. We ended up doing the pictures in my house. Um, and this is just a red um, seamless paper in the back and just playing with lights. But... We had such a great connection and we had so much great conversation right before the photo shoot um, that everything was just seamless and, 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 and beautiful. I mean, she just grabbed this humongous um, um, cupcake and she was just playing around with it and I was just shooting and, and she was just um, amazing. Um, so we did this picture and then we did one, um, a series of other pictures that have been shared a zillion of times on the internet that it was her uh, wearing a turban and, and, and it was fantastic. So That's the picture we have coming up, correct? Yes, I yeah, believe let me, so. Let me jump to that. We can jump back and forth if you'd like, but yes. this is so beautiful yeah. and so different than the last picture. So I love the two different moods, yes. um, but still the same beauty. I know, and, 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 and that was, was so magical. That has been one of my favorite photo shoots because uh, we had really a connection. We had great conversation, but besides that, um, I feel like at the beginning, like the two concepts we were going to do, I was like, well, we're going to jump from this to this. And, and you know, I, I changed everything and the back ground and everything and she was like she showed me what she was gonna wear but as soon as I saw her coming out wearing that and then the emotion the story that she talks to me about and what she gonna what she wanted to express with these images it was just I was just blown away and um, I think um, that's the magical thing when when you really um, have a connection and when you really do your best to to express whatever your client want to express on their pictures and, and, and when the, you really understand the, their concept and, and, and when you really do your best to, to bring out whatever they want. So she had her amazing birthday party that is super fun and she got this really amazing, uh, meaningful picture. Yeah, I'm toggling back to that picture as everyone can see. Beautiful, like you described, yeah. fun, happy, the cupcake, the color. 
uh, yeah. the beauty, yet the strength, the empowerment here, the beauty yes. is still there in just a different way. I, I can't imagine if she's in your studio, you know, and she's dressed like she is, I, I wouldn't put the camera down. It, it would almost be impossible to put the camera down. I didn't, and there are several and several pictures of, of, of that photo shoot that I have posted online, and in every single one of them, people just fall in love. This is a simple one. I have another one uh, where I use more props that I brought from the prop house, and, and it's gorgeous as well. But I like, I really like the simplicity of, of this image, which I rarely go for something simple, but this is, this is just sublime. And, and breathtaking. Yeah, no, no snails in this photo. Um, <laughs> no snails. Uh, no so snail not. races. But yeah, I, again, I, I think, Hilmar, what, what I'm learning, what I'm seeing, it's like the diversity in your work, the, the, the approach to the humor, the serious, to, to fulfill a client's needs, to, to just deliver, you know, constantly, I think, is the key to all of this. And you certainly do that. And I'm going to pull you back to uh, full screen. So I'm going to stop sharing. And there you are again. Um, the, the, these pictures make me smile. I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, I have interviewed people that have been in conflict and war and journalism um, uh, to portrait celebrity photographers uh, to now you. Uh, I, I think it's fascinating what you put together here. And, and I can't wait to see what you do next, I guess. Uh, so I will uh, continue to follow you uh, on your social you. pages. Thank you so much for giving us your time uh, today. It's, it's pretty amazing. I'm inspired for sure. I know others will be too. Thank you for having me. And you said something that, that really uh, makes me happy, which is that my images make you smile. And I have always said that that's what I want because life is complicated and, and the world is complicated. But if I can find joy by taking these images and then make you smile, I think that, that whatever I, I wanted to accomplish, I did. Well, so, you so. do that extremely well. Again, I will thank you for getting personal with us today and sharing some of your personal stories because I believe a lot of people out there may be able to connect with you and, um, and do what they can to get themselves out of some tough places. So I think that was a great message in all of this too. So thank you for calling down your work uh, to 10 Images here. They're beautiful. I'm inspired again. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for giving us this time, Hilmar. Thank and remember, you. guys, when you're searching, it's Gilmar, G-I-L-M-A-R Smith, but it's pronounced Hilmar, and you do that all over your pages, so that's yes. how we do. But thank you again. This is just uh, the beginning of, a, of an incredible relationship uh, uh, within Nikon and you, and thank you for sharing time with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Those of you tuning into the Creators Hour, thank you for tuning in. We hope you've been inspired by Hilmar and the work she's done. Um, it certainly makes me want to play with conceptual art more um, and, and not just shoot the moment. So get out there and be inspired uh, as we work our way out of the pandemic and uh, try to get back to a normal. Check out NikonUSA.com backslash Creators Hour so you can see things we've done before. We've done quite a few interviews with many different types of photographers and certainly have shared all kinds of tips and tricks to shooting. So be inspired. Thank you guys for tuning in. For Nikon, I am Mike Corrado. Everybody out there, be safe, be creative, and share your work.